Dr. Brandon, we have all kinds of contact lenses, and um, as you explained in another video, um, uh, you know, they do all kinds of things these days. And uh, uh, tell us, you know, some, I, I, I literally have one of my office managers, in fact, every so often I say, what's wrong uh, uh, with your eye? And she starts, you know, I mean, itchy and itchy. Um, and, and personally, I think she buys those uh, contact lenses, I know, those contact lenses which are in there, I don't know, a few days. And she says, well, no, that's what they say you can do and should do with them. I go, okay, that's what they say, but uh, maybe you shouldn't have them in it so long. Maybe they should be exchanged. So shade some light on whether contact lenses which get ex thrown away every day or every couple of days are better than the ones you can put in on in and out and wash and do all kinds of things. Uh, my wife does that, you know. She, she washes them, and um, it's a whole ceremony, I think. So uh, shed some, <laughs> shed some light on it of what is for most people, you know, what have you experienced, what's good or not so good for them? Well, contacts, soft contacts, when they first came out, um, they told us they'd last around a year. But as time went on, they realized people were having problems, and they course study, we know, why are these problems coming, and the, the contacts, the older they get, tend to build up um, deposits of various kinds, proteins from your tears and lipids and things like that, and those are things that bacteria like to eat, and so it provides a place, like a it's a picnic for the bacteria to come and eat when you are wearing an older and dirtier lens. Of course, we would teach people to clean their lenses, and people would do their best, but with the best of the cleaning techniques and the best of the solutions, still stuff happens. Another problem with older lenses is they didn't let very much oxygen through compared with newer technologies that we have today. And so um, to try to get oxygen to the corneas better so that they wouldn't swell and um, maybe get infected as quickly, they... Um, added water to the content of the material of the lens because water was a way to get more oxygen through. But the problem with that was the increased water content meant that the lens would deposit even more quickly. So that seemed to lead to the advent of disposable lenses. And some of the first disposable options were quarterly disposable, so every three months, or then every month, every two weeks, and then more currently to the market, we even have daily disposable options. And so, do, you, do you think that they are better? As, as short of a disposable action, as better they are uh, in terms of irritating the eye? Well, there are people that have eye irritation problems that I put in a daily disposable, and they're very happy again, and they're able to wear their contacts longer in the day, and, and it's very convenient for them to just, place them on the eye, and then take them off and throw them away when they're done. Um, so, yes, at, at least for some people it's better to do daily disposable. Okay. Well, I personally am not even sure I would ever want to wear a lens simply because, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't put an eye drop in my eye. I mean, you know, you have to... Be, you really have to pray open that eye to, for me to get that eye drop in it. Otherwise, forget it. Uh, since a small kid, I, I, there's no way for me to go in the water underneath, open my eyes and look in the swimming pool or anywhere. I, I swim, I'm, I'm in you know, all that stuff, but get, getting, having, you know, get water in there is just, so I, I, I don't know. And I, I there are lots of people like that who um, have a hard time putting eye drop, uh, you know, lenses or eye drops into their eye. Yeah, there are quite a few people, and um, many of those people would just never even think of putting a contact on their eyes, and they may never, you know, maybe they want to try, and um, and they may not be successful, but some of them that have a real strong desire to do that, they can overcome, many people can overcome the um, the fear of touching their eye or getting things close to their eye. Let me it takes you. a little practice, just like learning to ride a bike it takes practice. Okay. Takes a little practice. Okay. Well, let me ask you. Besides of the way a person might think of looking or not looking good, wearing glasses or not wearing glasses, let's take that totally away because that's a very personal, uh, you know, thing. In terms of functionality, is there a difference between? 
glasses and lenses, uh, uh, contact lenses? Oh, yeah. Contact lenses, one advantage to contact lenses is you have your natural side vision. Like at the edge of my glasses here, it's all blurry. But when I wore contacts, I could see everywhere I looked just fine. I see. So, so basically... The ideal it, for sports. Okay. Um, and you don't have reflections off your lenses mm-hmm. because they're right on the eye. Um, you can do fun things with contacts like change the color of your eye with a tint that you can't really do with glasses. Okay. Okay. So you have a... You, you can see more. You can... Basically, so basically a contact lens in the end can do a little bit more than a glass. But it, but the main thing still gets fixed with a glass also. It just... Yeah. You have a, yeah, okay. Got it. Now... Just a different way. Yeah. So what about a person who needs uh, this, you know, this bifocal, as you called it, you know, he sees well up, not so well, you know, and, and, and needs reading glasses, but sees pretty good far distance. Uh, are contact lenses good for him too? Is it the same contact lens which is built a certain way or how does that work? Well, there's different ways we can approach the problem of presbyopia with contact lenses. Uh, the first way was called monovision, where we take the same technology that we would use to correct the distance vision in a contact, but just fit it on the eye differently. Basically, instead of both eyes seeing well at the distance, we would correct one of the eyes so it would see, be designed to see well up close, and then that would usually be the non-dominant eye. And then with the dominant eye, let that one's design be to fix it for distance. So historically, monovision was one way to try to avoid having to wear glasses at all and continue to wear contacts past your 40s and see well at distance and near. And then later, the technology came about to actually have bifocal contacts. And bifocal contacts come in different designs, but basic idea is the Two powers are both in front of your pupil. Powers to correct the distance and powers to correct the near in front of your pupil on the same eye. This is called simultaneous viewing when both powers are being presented to the eye at once. Compared with the glasses where you look above to see distance and below to see near. So simultaneous viewing in a soft context is a way to um, help people see both distance and near. It's not I wish it were as good as it sounded um, because it's not all that it's cracked up to be. When you um, take all of the light out there and split it, you know, some of it coming from distance, some of it coming from near, um, imagine it a little bit like looking through a screen. And so when you just need um, a weak bifocal power, they work very well because it's like looking through one screen. And that's not so bad. It's not quite as clear as the window, right? But it it might haze things out just a little bit. But then when you need a stronger power because you're getting older, put the next strength in front of you. Now it's a little bit like looking through two screens. And things are a little bit more blurry. So it's a little bit of a balancing act to find the place where the patient is happy enough with their distance vision and their near vision to to want to buy the bifocal contact. They're very good when you're in your early 40s. I I felt like I had a miracle, and I was able to continue wearing contacts um, very happily. There came a point when I needed a stronger bifocal that, though I use them bifocal contacts still, I didn't feel like it was good for everything that I did. And so I use them part of the time, but not all of the time. Part of it depends on your personality. If you really need things to be perfect, if you're kind of a perfectionist in your character, the engineer type or type A, you're probably less apt to be happy with your vision in a bifocal contact if if you're at a mature age. Um, You probably would be happy in your early 40s, but as time went on, you'd probably drop out, except for maybe part-time. Got it. And then if once you get unhappy, you do what? You switch to glasses? You might um, switch back to glasses. That's, that's what I chose because for my convenience, that was the way I could get all the way from distance to near. But um, I have patients that like their bifocals, and it, it depends on your job. 
you know, and how well you have to see. Like, if you have to see, I feel like I owe it to my patients to give them 20-20 vision. If I'm looking at their cornea and I might miss a spot because it's a little bit blurry. So that's why I went to, as an optometrist on the job, I, I wear glasses because I feel like I owe my patients the sharpest vision possible. But if I'm going to church and I just need to read the hymnal and the words on the hymnal or, and look up and see the overhead um, words, I can I can do that kind of task just fine and computer at home and things like that. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, here you have it. So um, there's basically options, and in the end, people sh- have perhaps no choice rather than trying one, trying another one, and see how they feel with it, and uh, and then go settle with what uh, what they feel good yeah right the fitting process is usually a little bit longer for a person in a bifocal contact because we do have to find out what their needs what needs are most important to them you know and we can optimize the distance in one eye and the near in the other eye that's called modified monovision in a bifocal um so we try, let them try it like you suggested and find out in their real world what they're still having problems with and then modify it based on that. Right. So they come back two or three times possibly instead of just one time like a, yeah. a standard fit would be. Yeah, well, I understand. But the, the truth is that's uh, the case with many things in life. You know, you you go and you try one option and version which you thought might be the option and version you like and then but then you try the other one and and, and you keep going back and forward till you settle on what might you know fit you the best which in many cases is not you know it's not necessarily like with eyesight I mean it perhaps might not replace your perfect or uh, your own vision but consider that you need some glasses or do you need some lenses go and figure out what suits you best and then go and run with that because right, we and what works for one patient might not work for you. A little bit is like dependent on how big your pupil is. So right. one design might not work for um, you when it works for your wife, for instance. Right, and then there are the trade-offs. Like I don't like things in my eyes, so maybe I see a little bit better with that one or overall, or, or I don't like the glasses, but at the same time I don't like to put it in. So in the, in the end it's like, okay, what is it for you, your personal feeling, your personal trade-offs, uh, and sometimes we don't know things which we are accustomed to. We don't realize that we doing a certain job and need it for this vision and, and, and need it to always look up. You might not think of that when you first fit your glasses or that you always need to look down. Mm-hmm. You, 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 might, you might only realize that as you get involved in it, uh, but it's probably good if an optometrist like you asks all that questions, which I'm sure you were doing, because otherwise you wouldn't have pointed all that stuff out. Okay, thank you very, very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope that helps the, our, our viewers here that they right away ask the right question to their optometrist and say, look, I'm sitting on the computer, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, to make sure that um, the potential best choice gets made from the beginning. Thank you very much.